MSI GTX 460 1 gig Hawk. This is a card that there's been quite a lot of buzz about because of uh, some screenshots that have surfaced over the last few weeks showing this GTX 460 running at 1 gigahertz on air with stock cooling stable. So there's been just a ton of buzz about what makes this card so special that it is able to achieve that kind of overclock without any liquid cooling or any uh, any you know voltage mods or other tricks. So let's have a look at what MSI has to say for themselves on the inside of the box. First of all, you've got triple over voltage support. So you can adjust the voltage of the GPU, memory, and PLL just using MSI's outstanding afterburner software. Next, it has a seven plus one phase PWM design. So that means it's capable of providing uh, loads more current up to 120 amps of current than the reference GTX 460, which uses a four plus one phase PWM. All right, so there's a couple things it has going for it. So obviously it uses a custom PCB. That's why it took so long to launch. You don't have to come in and out so much. You can just mostly look here for now. Um, also, it features MSI's military class components. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that has to do with it's cooler and more reliable, but to me, the biggest advantage of military class components is the fact that you don't get coil whine. Coil whine sucks. It's loud, so even if you have a quiet fan, it's like a little noise when you're playing games. It's just stupid. I hate it. So. Any MSI cards that I've used that feature military class components, I have not once witnessed coil wine on them, which is terrific. Also, you have V-checkpoints. This has shown up on quite a few MSI motherboards, and they're little built-in points where you can uh, uh, connect your multimeter and you can monitor the voltages of the GPU memory and PLL using an actual multimeter instead of relying on only software. Now, it does feature a twin Frozer 2 thermal design, so it means you got dual 80 millimeter PWN fans. You have a nickel plated copper cooler. It uses heat pipe direct touch, multiple heat pipes, and a high density heat sink. MSI claims up to 18 degrees cooler and 8.1 decibels quieter than the reference cooler. And that's all while still achieving these outstanding overclocks and uh, all of these extra voltage modification features. It's just, uh, this, is a, this is a pretty cool SKU. I've been really waiting for this one. So here we go. The Hawk itself. It is overclo factory overclocked, although that's not really even all that relevant for something like this. It comes with a couple of Molex to six pin PCI Express adapters. Here are the uh, little V-check adapters. So you plug those into the, uh, into the card and then you plug your multimeter into this. So you've got three of those included. I guess they're going to go ahead and assume if you're buying a Hawk Edition card, you've got a, uh, uh, a DVI. Oh, okay, don't look at that. That's apparently a little note to thank me for evaluating it. It has passed uh, related testing issues. Oh, okay. Huh, neat. I've never seen one of these before. Okay. Um, accessories. I found more accessories. They're hiding. There we are. So it has adapters. Okay, we have a uh, DVI to... VGA adapter. We have a uh, mini HDMI to HDMI adapter. We have a driver DVD or CD, throw it away. Uh, download the latest off the NVIDIA website. We have a little uh, Hawk series brochure showing you how to use uh, MSI live update, showing you where all your V checkpoints are, uh, showing you the actual layout of the bare PCB card. That's kind of neat. I've never seen that before included with a video card, a little quick installation guide, all good things. Must come to an end, including that manual. Okay, and then we have a quick user's guide here as well. Now let's look at the card itself because this is the moment we have truly all been waiting for. I did mention it comes factory overclocked. It comes at 780 megahertz, although that is not even close to what MSI claims right on the box you ought to be able to achieve with this particular card. It has, uh, I think I mentioned already, it has one gig of memory. Okay. And let's just take off the little plastic covers that come on all the connectors so that we can take a closer look at the card itself. So in terms of layout, you know what? I wish I had a regular GTX 460 to compare it against right off the bat here because 
I, it does look a little bit longer to me, but I can't actually tell without having a direct comparison. You can see on the back of the PCB, this is a, a black-ish PCB card. It's got a little bit of brownness to it, but that doesn't really matter. It has an SLI connector up here on the top. It's got a PCI Express 16X connector down here at the bottom. The heatsink attaches via four screws, so it looks like it would be quite easy to remove if you did feel like putting on a... Um, uh, a GPU water block or anything like that. Uh, let me see what this is. So this is the GPU V-Switch PWM Clock Tuner. You know what, they don't mention that, but yeah, those could be pretty cool buttons depending what they do. All right, let's move around to the front of the card. So you can see the dual 80 millimeter fan twin frozer cooler. This is the same cooler except with, uh, with nickel plated copper heat pipes and base and aluminum fins that we saw on the MSI GeForce GTX 465 Golden Edition. So it's that same twin frozer design, but this one is copper and aluminum. So that means you see the same innovations carried over. The heat pipes that move further away from the GPU are actually thicker so that they can carry heat more efficiently so that means that you're able to make full use of the entire cooler surface with these two fans and I'm gonna look for those V checkpoints here they are so you've got two PCIe six pin connectors here and there are your three uh, v checkpoints where you can monitor the voltage of your uh, GPU memory and uh, hold on help me and PLL using an actual multimeter here on the back of the card you've got vents in the back so Okay, here. Here's how this heatsink's gonna work. Some of the air from this fan is gonna be exhausted directly out of the case, but quite a bit of it is going to be exhausted in your case. So if you wanna get the best GPU temperatures possible, you wanna make sure you have good airflow throughout your case. Okay, so then we've got two DVI connectors and one mini HDMI connector. Remember, you can only use two of these at once. And in order to get uh, surround, uh, surround support, you have to have two of these bad boys. So then you'd plug in uh, two monitors here and then one on the third card. Now it does support CUDA, 3D Vision, uh, as I mentioned, GeForce Surround. If you have two cards, it supports two-way SLI and all the other usual NVIDIA features, PhysX, there's another one. And thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the GeForce GTX 460 Hawk from MSI.